The Crusade calls us, my friend. Johanna, a powerful crusader of the Zakarum faith. Howdy, YouTube. This is Kyle Ferguson from Into the Nexus podcast, and I'm here to talk about value. And I'm going to use blinds and Johanna as my example, but I want you to think beyond that. This isn't a Johanna guide. This isn't necessarily a guide about blinding. It is a guide to talk about getting the most out of your abilities using the full text. If you are stuck below Gold League, it's because you're not finding value in the things you are doing. And this is an idea we're taking from card games. If you spend per point of mana in Hearthstone, you want to get the most per point of mana out of that. Well, in Heroes of the Storm, if you have an ability, you want to use all the text of the ability and find a high value place for that ability to have the highest impact. So Johanna is in a unique position here being a tank. As a tank, it's not your job to necessarily do damage. It's to peel, control the battlefield. And so Johanna wants to make sure that she's having as much impact with her low CC abilities to make sure she is a proper tank for the team. So you got Shield Glare here, deals a minor amount of damage, and blinds for 1.5 seconds. So if I blind like this, I hit one target. One target for my point of mana is not as valuable, of course, as going elsewhere and hitting multiple targets per point of mana. I have now gained value. You understand this basic concept. The problem is that when I look at tank play or value equations in silver and bronze, I see a lot of that's good enough moves. Take for example, let's say that this target dummy here is Vala. It's a little bit of a big Vala, but Vala nonetheless. So Vala has auto attacks, and the more she auto attacks, the longer she auto attacks, the more benefits she gets from her hatred trait. If I pop Vala here on engage with a blind, how long did that really last? Did Vala feel it? Sure, her initial auto attacks might have been blowned out. She didn't get the value from stacking up during that time, but she just keeps going on the other side. If it's after 10 and I blind Vala, well, she might strafe. She might do a double hungering arrow. She will completely ignore the aspect of this blind by doing other things to make up for that time. When you see Vala on the enemy side, you don't think of blinds. You think of CC, you want to kill, destroy, and lock down Vala. Blinds are the wrong way to think about countering Vala in the first place. What we're looking for with someone like Johanna is an opportunity to actually remove something of value. Auto attacks are free. We are trading in our 45 mana and a 12 second cooldown to remove a free ability. That's not good value. What we want to do is remove something of real value that the enemy might have. Let's take example someone like Raynor. His trait, and that glowing there shows it, every fourth basic attack deals bonus damage and splashes. So if we were to remove a normal basic attack from Raynor, does he care? 1.5 seconds, he's just firing on the other side of those abilities. But using our game knowledge, we wait for that glow. We increase our impact on the battlefield and the value of our abilities. So let's count it out. There's the one, one, two, three glow, and we blind him. That attack is now gone. There is no enhanced damage. There is no splash damage. AI Rainer's gonna get himself into trouble here, but you understand my point. We have removed something of value from Rainer, the AI bot. Let's put him out of his misery. So with this thought in mind, removing something of greater value than the free auto attack, let's point out those heroes who have an ability that attaches directly to their auto attack. We just talked about Raynor and give him some pepper. But did you know that Ragnaros's Empower Sulfurus, though it deals ability damage, is tied to their basic attack? If you blind Ragnaros before he's going to Empower Sulfurus, and he holds up his hammer and makes kind of a big deal of it, he will miss it. It won't go off. He won't receive the 20% of damage dealt healing and that is doubled versus heroes. What an awesome opportunity to make something happen versus Ragnaros, who thinks they're going to heal a dramatic amount. Even more so, 
if they're doing a full-blown cauterized wounds build with the giant killer reset of Hand of Ragnaros into Giant Scorcher. Maiev's Umbral Bind, Maiev's next basic attack cleaves. Pretty obvious when Maiev's gonna go in. Spirit of Vengeance goes forward, or she's mounted up, runs in, and gets that connect. What if before she made that connecting auto attack, you hooked her up with a blind, causing her 55 mana, 14 second cooldown, that is a huge part of her engage and her team fight ability, to just disappear? What if you made a Malfeel miss their mark? What if he didn't have a Reaper's Mark applied, and therefore wasn't healing, therefore wasn't able to use Wraith Strike to teleport around the battlefield? That'd mess him up pretty good. See an Artanis walking towards you? Well, guess what he likes to do? Twin Blades, which is a double, maybe triple in the late game, auto attack. Now he's deep without actually applying any damage. His trait, your basic attacks lower the cooldown of shield overload. What if those basic attacks in double in this case didn't happen. What about Thrall's Wind Fury? Now we're starting to get to situations where there's a window of time that a hero is performing greater than the normal kit. Thrall is going to make three very quick together basic attacks. We know this because it makes a bunch of Wind Fury sound, and he rushes in with increased movement speed. Removing that would be a high value moment. King of this is perhaps Tychus with the minigun, and the minigun lasts a set duration, meaning that Tychus is going to be engaged for a very small window, 1.5 seconds of blind during that small window for Tychus is huge. He doesn't have the range to hang out for an extended period of time, and this is where we start to see characters that can be blound anytime really, because their windows of engage are small, therefore we're removing the point where they have the greatest impact from the game. When characters have these smaller windows of engagement, blinding them when they are connected is going to make the most value. Now there's Lunara who always just has poison tied to her basic attack. Blinding her when she's in range to make something happen just means we're getting rid of a bulk of damage that is tied to that basic attack. But Tracer goes in, she reloads, and she begins to fire. Blinding her not only gives you the reload duration on each side of that blind attack, but she doesn't stay engaged for a long time. This is why blinding Vala, or even blinding Sergeant Hammer, doesn't get a lot of value, because they're just at max range and going to continue to deliver these basic attacks. Why would you blind Samuro when he's walking towards your team? You'd want to blind him when he's actually connected in melee, when there are illusions out to blind as well. Here's a nice example, what about Stukov? Big, massive, meat arm auto attack. Pretty darn obvious that Stukov wants to put out a basic attack, because he's going to have to walk all the way from his safe position into the melee. It's pretty easy to know when someone like Stukov is going to deliver their big basic attack. But it's these moments of connectedness that a blind is actually going to see good value. Blind Sammy, when he's just walking in, he'll split into clones. He'll use mirror image, clear himself of the blind, and he wasn't dealing any damage anyway. As we talk about this further, don't forget the importance of that connectedness. The enemy you're blinding has to actually be about to or currently dealing auto attack damage to actually have an impact for your blind to matter. But let's add on top of this the thought that many heroes heal based on their own auto attacks. And from our first idea, we have Orphea, who empowers her next basic attack with chaos, causing her to deal bonus damage and heal for 100% of the damage dealt. That flying shadow missile that she throws has all those stacks of chaos attached to it. When we blind her auto attacks, we actually remove something massive from her, including self-healing. And king of self-healing, it's Illidan. Illidan is in there getting reduced cooldowns based on his trait, as well as healing for the damage he deals. If we blind Illidan, when he's actually connected, we create a dead Illidan situation, or one that can't sustain himself. Zul, doing a blue build, is able to get massive heals, particularly in a 1v5 scenario, which delays just long enough for the rest of the team to show up. Blue build Zul has a huge value window with blinds. Imperius a little less so. It doesn't consume the mark if he doesn't actually hit the auto attack, but stopping healing on Imperius is not a bad idea. 
And the boss, the boss of the low leagues outside of Kael'thas is Butcher. Butcher, it's pretty obvious to know when he's connected. He's gonna scream about some meat, run all the way in, and once he's applied, that's done, he's gonna start auto-attacking. You could blind him right then and there, but the even better thing to do would be to blind him after he's connected and after he's put on the mark that he's going to be healing from. Also remember that blinds are removed by Unstoppable, so if you're blinding the Butcher while he runs in, it's not going to do a darn thing. You have to let him connect and then apply the blind on the other side. A good blind is that combination of value and connectedness. But as we already talked about, Vala has spell damage abilities like Strafe she can do to take up the duration of your blind. You think you're going to blind Sonya? Oh no, she went war paint. Guess what? Sonya can go whirlwinding and just take up the entire time of the blind. Sergeant Hammer might feel good giving her a blind, but she's at max range and simply does not care. She will continue to auto attack until she's on the other side. Now there is a special case here. Zul'jin will continue to auto attack. Zul'jin in fact really really likes farming stacks on things like Johanna that like to hang out inside his range. A blind during a Taz Dingo? Now we're starting to get interesting. What about a hero like Varian, who is healing off his basic attacks in Twin Blades form, has moments of connectedness, but will keep going on the other side? Zul'jin Varian. Now we can start to make this more interesting when we apply talents. The level 7 talent Zealous Glare allows Johanna's basic attacks to increase the duration of Shield Glare's blind up to a maximum of 3 seconds. This means with a Taz Dingo lasting 4 seconds, we can encompass the entire Taz Dingo into that one blind. Zul'jin is also rather immobile, so we have a greater chance of actually succeeding in applying these basic attacks over and over again to make sure we can blind him for the full duration of a Taz Dingo. Now we've created with talents a situation where our blind during Taz Dingo is fully effective. Variant makes this even easier. He is basic attacking in melee while doing a fury build. It is very easy for Johanna with her slows and her condemn to hold on to Varian and make him have trouble during this time. But oh no, you early picked Johanna and the enemy team didn't pick any auto attackers. Seems like you've made a draft mistake, right? Well no, we can still get value out of Shield Glare, we're just changing the way we now think about it. It is a poke, a low damage poke, but a poke all the same from the tank. You know who doesn't like to be poked? People who are mounted, people who are doing rotations, people who are trying to double soak, but also people like Garrosh, whose kit feels reliant on being mounted so he can run in real close, pick you up and throw you, and slam you. What about Alarak? Alarak in high levels is just constantly mounted, waiting on the cooldown of his next Discord and telekinesis. Diablo's always mounted, trying to get in good angles so he can shadow charge. If you dismount any of these three characters, they are going to be greatly reduced in what they can actually do to your team and the positions they are able to pull off. Just because Shield Glare doesn't have auto attack applications, blind applications, to an enemy team doesn't mean it's a useless ability or that you misdrafted. In fact, in the low leagues, it's such a perception that Johanna is an anti-auto attack hero that the entire kit goes ignored. Iron Skin is Great versus Burst, it gives you more overall health in the form of a shield. You can choose at level 1 on Johanna to increase your hold your ground iron skin, meaning you're better into burst damage, a pile of mages for that case. Or you can go Laws of Hope, which is going to give you heal over time. Heal over time counters sustain damage. Now, versus that full mage team, blind is 100% free. We don't need it to make these full value equations. We are dismounting the enemy team on their rotations, slowing them down as they approach objectives. We may also be able to say, Blind has no application in the late game to stop auto attacks, so let's use it to heal ourselves. We're just going to hit as many people as possible with our Blind. Doesn't even matter if they're connectedness or if they have applied auto attacks. We're just going to use it for heal, because I don't need it for a Blind. We're transforming the ability, changing its value into something else with our talents. What about Sins Exposed that marks a lane? All enemies. This increases your lane clear. The value equation is multifaceted. 
But anytime you feel like you have a useless ability, we transform it into something new. In this case, poke, dismount, sight in bushes, lane clear. Never stop thinking about value. Value is how you coach yourself. Value is how you watch your own replays and learn something through them, alone. When you get to the end of the game, don't blame your teammates. Praise the enemy team for doing well. And think about the auto attacks you missed, the abilities that didn't have value. You cast Blizzard from Jaina and it hit two targets? Why didn't it hit three? What could you have done to increase the per point of mana to damage? What could you do to interrupt something important with a stun? What could you do to interrupt something important with a stun? What could you do on the most simple level, like that, with a blind from Shield Glare, to increase your impact in the game you just played? Thank you for watching this video. I was Kyle Ferguson. Be sure to subscribe here at Heroes Hearth for more Learn to Play Heroes of the Storm videos. Don't forget to ring that bell as well. I'll see you next week with more Learn to Play content for Heroes of the Storm.